I'm a reporter for the radio station in Swaziland. We are here reporting live what is happening this annual event. Beautiful event, I must say. The girls, some as young as six years, do attend. And this regiment is called Imbali. Uh, Imbali is a flower. A, f a flower beautifies the nation. Some I interviewed someone here who said he's a teacher, but this is an event uh, for the young girls and the older girls who are unmarried. So when they're here, they don't only do this uh, cutting, but they are also learning skills, which will equip them tomorrow to be better women, to be better equipped and know, because this is culture. This is their identity. This is what defines them. The role of the readers was that they showed respect to the Queen Mother by bringing this read, because the read is used to, it's like a fence, to make a fence to to the, to the royal crown. So it was like um, uh, some kind of uh, honor to the Queen Mother's uh, residence that they bring the reed dance. They get accommodation, they get food, they travel, they walk safely, and there's just no harm happening to them until the last day. So, so it's just looking after them, giving them peace, protecting them, guiding them, helping them. If one of them gets sick along the way, one of us should accompany that kid to an ambulance or a nearest clinic. And if it's a serious case, one of us then has to call the chief back home to inform that parent of that child that um, the child is now in such and such a condition. So just to update that family so that they will see what to do from there. 
Otherwise, that responsibility comes back to government. They take all responsibilities, like treating the child, taking the child to hospital. If that child has to be admitted and spend a few days in the hospital, they just do that. Take an ambulance, take the child to And there are always uh, nurses working with us along the way. With, with Everything in Swaziland begins in the chief room. That is where everything is initiated, every concern is taken from, and then taken to the Tengunda, where you'll find the member of parliament, who is the one who's going to take those concerns to parliament. With the same attire, you'll find that there is a face of the king. Only the present king will appear on those attires. Like now, it's our king, Swati the Third. You'll always see his face on the shields. In fact, the traditional attire is more of, most of the colors are, are the same colors that you see appearing on the flag, the Swazi flag. Like there's a red, yellow, blue, white, black. Usually the white, come, the white and black comes with the shield. The red in history it's about when there were wars, sharing of blood, something like that. And the, there's a blue for peace. And then the yellow, of, I think I've missed that one, I forgot about that one, but they all have meanings. They represent something, just from the source of life. in coming to the Reed Dance since I knew it was a big part of the Swazi culture and actually I would say up to a week before coming here everyone would you know you would go buy lunch or you would you know talk to someone on the street and everyone would say are you going to the Reed Dance are you going to the Reed Dance before the Reed Dance I was sending my friends links to articles and you know most people um, at universities in the United States would see this as somewhat um, I don't know, old-fashioned or traditional or almost barbaric that the king would be choosing a 14th wife. Um, and so before coming here, I said, gosh, you know, I can't come, I can't support this. But now that I was actually here and you see the dances and you have visitors from Zimbabwe dancing, visitors from South Africa, um, and I mean, just look, look at the kids in their beautiful dress right here. Um, I think it does change your perspective and you see the celebration of their own identity rather than, um, you know, something that we just see through our Western or from Eastern um, perspectives with the global media. We see it as something that may be inappropriate given the AIDS crisis. interested to see 60,000 maidens all <laughs> dancing for the king and for uh, the queen mother. Um, I, I didn't really know what to expect and so it was just very interesting to see all the different dress um, and you know, different regions and their clothing and really had a good time. I think that so it was very interesting I think that um, living in the Bonnie in many ways Western because the roads are developed. You see people walking, but it doesn't. And even when you go into the rural areas, it's you know dirt and structures. But you don't you don't see this type of display of culture the, every day. Um, so I feel very lucky. I think in general, Swaziland is a kind of underrated country when you think about where to go in Africa. You usually think of the Serengeti or the pyramids or Victoria Falls, and um, most people don't think to come to Swaziland. And I actually have really enjoyed my time here, and I think there's a lot to do. Uh, and coming during the Reed Dance really gives people a chance to see a, a Swazi culture, and also there are just nature and a lot of 
things that Swaziland has to offer. So. It's when we're in the past, singing, we're going to the Tutsini, singing in the past, people are looking at us, they are just drawing the attention of our culture. Yeah. And when the, the day for the dancing, the real dance, and the, just to be away from home, yeah, yeah, it's nice. It's nice to be away from home, <laughs> because when, when we are at home, mm. we need to cook. Clean. Wash dishes, clean. Wash dishes. There we are not Sit doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> Sit there. Yeah. Yeah. I think she ran. Mm. Like her as I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs>